After an intense battle with Godzilla from the 1964 film Mothra vs. Godzilla, Mothra would have to deal with another villainous monster in the 1964 film, Ghidorah, the Three-Headed Monster. And this creature named Ghidorah is from outer space, born from a meteor that had crashed down onto Earth. Ghidorah annihilates everything and anything in its path, either by simply flying over it or blasting everything with his lightning beams. Well, officially it's called his gravity beams. I didn't know gravity was yellow. Oh, I see, it causes gravity. Yes. This will not be an easy task for Mothra. Besides, there's only one now. Apparently the other died, but it's just brushed aside like it's nothing. Probably for budget reasons. Now, she's not just a woman with a hot body. No, <laughs> she's got a super brain. She attempts to persuade Godzilla and Rodan, his first appearance in a Godzilla movie and second since the 1956 Rodan, to help her fight Ghidorah and save the world. But they're too busy playing volleyball with a rock. <laughs> it's like a little sister trying to get her older brother's attention. They're jerks! Well, what better way to get their attention than to spray them with her silky attack? <laughs> Rodan has a good chuckle. But then Mothra lays the same smack down on him. <laughs> and Godzilla laughs his butt cheeks off. She tries several times to persuade him to help her fight Ghidorah and save the world. But the dirty duo wants no part in saving the Earth. So, brave, determined Mothra attempts to take on Ghidorah herself. With no success. But Godzilla and Rodan come around to their senses and lay the beat down in a three-on-one awesome monstrosity of a battle. Godzilla helps the injured Mothra up the hill with his tail, which, it's just adorable. And Rodan collides with Ghidorah midair. Ooh, that sounded like it hurt. And then ends up hiding behind a rock to evade Ghidorah's gravity beams. <laughs> Look at him poking his head out, it's awesome. This is where the series started to take on a light-hearted approach. Whereas before, Godzilla was a living metaphor of the atomic bombs dropped in Japan, now gets hit in the cross for laughs. And in the butt. The Big G plays the hero for once, though in this film he's reluctant to do so, but he remained as the good guy, or at the very least an anti-hero, for the rest of the original series. Ghidorah makes his first of many appearances in the series, eventually evolving into Godzilla's greatest foe. All the monsters up to this point have been prehistoric dinosaurs or giant versions of everyday animals. But Ghidorah reminds me of a mythical dragon from ancient Japanese folklore. He just looks badass. Although you'd think he'd get nauseous with his head flailing about all the time. And originally, he was going to look like this! Yuck. The outer space theme would pop up many times in the series, and this is the first of ludicrous Godzilla plots, although nowhere near as crazy as the later ones. Let's see, you've got a princess who says she's from Venus and exclaims her prophetic dreams to the world. There's weird science going on with the meteor. A cable access show where everyone gets to sing the Mothra. A brother and sister who fight like five-year-olds. There's even espionage, where one of the hitmen never takes his sunglasses off. Even when he's shooting in the dark. I love it, I love it, I love it. This craziness is how I like my Godzilla, especially when applying anthropomorphism and human characteristics to monsters. This is the Godzilla I grew up with. I've seen this film the most out of any other Godzilla movie, and it's the first movie I ever owned! Yeah! I remember opening this on Christmas Day, and I can still envision the VHS cover art. Even though the Americanized title version says Ghidra, I guess they didn't have time to proofread! But the fun factor is still high, and it's nostalgia all the way. I watch it once a year on Christmas Eve, a tradition I've held for several years. Ooh, yeah! It just never gets old. Yeah!